Hello and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing this rose from my phone and doing it in ink and wash. Now sometimes when we're busy with other things and we haven't got time to stop and do a sketch we'll see something that catches our eye and we really want to capture that but we haven't got the time. So it's good just to take a little snap on your phone and then you can maybe come back to it later. So this was these roses outside my window that I took on my phone a few days ago. Um, and what I really liked was looking at them from the back because we've the the roses have got lots of different shapes all these curved petals the way because they're aging and the, they're opening up quite a lot they were curling and they're a beautiful color I think it's one called tequila sunrise but I may be wrong it was it was already there and um, it's been there for years and years but it gets these beautiful um, oranges and yellows and as the um, rose matures it goes into all different colors so yeah so what I did was I just took this very quick snap looking out of the window to get the back of these roses and then this morning I've done an ink sketch I did it in pencil first just so that um, you know I, I knew where I was going with my lines and I didn't make a mistake with the ink because I wanted it to be quite stylized um, and quite precise so I did a pencil drawing first and then I did this ink drawing so I used um, a Faber-Castell pit pen and that one is the size small so that's in the set that I've, I've got but that's the smaller size I've got in that because obviously with a flower something delicate like a rose you don't want to be doing it in a big thick chunky pen use a nice fine one as long as it's waterproof so and you'll notice this is the first page of this new book. Um, uh, the last watercolour video I did I've finished my previous pad so I decided to get this one. Now I'm not going to try and pr pronounce it. It's obviously a German make and I really don't know how you pronounce this but the main thing I look for when I'm getting a new pad, um, A4 is quite a handy size for me but the main thing I look for is that it's a, at least 140 pounds in weight, so that's 300 gram. I also like it hot pressed. You may like cold pressed or not pressed, but I really like hot pressed paper. And I like it to be acid free as well. So it's called Harmony Watercolour Paper. And like I say, I'm not going to um, try and pronounce that, but I will link it down below if I can find it. I will link it in the description below. So as I've not used it before, and I'm not sure how it's going to go with the watercolours, I'm going to make sure that I have it just fastened down at the edges. So I use these bulldog clips. Sometimes I use masking tape as well, but uh, those are quite handy, those little bulldog clips. So for beginners to watercolour, I thought the easiest thing to do for us today would be to do it wet on dry. So allowing each layer of watercolour to dry before I put the next layer on. Now it goes without saying that your ink must also be dry. So even though these ink pens do dry quite quickly, just be careful not to immediately go in with your rubber to erase your pencil lines because you can end up smudging it. So just give it a few minutes to dry or go over it, go over it with a hairdryer before you start applying your paint. So the paints I've already made up a few different colours. Like I say, it's these beautiful um, reds and yellows. So I've got quinacridine gold, cadmium orange, cadmium orange with cadmium red added. That's cadmium red with some Windsor violet to give us a shadow colour. And then for the leaves, because of the quite a dark leaf on the roses, I've got the sap green, but I've added French ultramarine to that and th this one is the same colour as this only with more of the ultramarine and less of the green so it's more bluey for a shadow colour. So if we actually look on the phone um, you perhaps can't see it too much it's not the best picture like I say just a quick little snap because I wanted the shape of this particular rose um, but it's very much in the shade at the back of it because obviously the sun's coming from the other side so these leaves look almost black but we're not going to do them like that we're going to do them with a, a nice rich green as as they are make them a bit better lit and so we keep it a nice sunny little picture and i'm not going to do a background either i'm just going to keep the emphasis on this rose so actually i'm going to go over the whole flower with this yellow to begin with so i'll probably speed the video up at this point whilst i try and keep in between the lines with this quinacridine gold That's starting to dry quite nicely, but just to make sure it's dry, we'll uh, not just work on it just yet, we'll carry on and do the leaves. 
So this is one thing you need to watch when you're doing roses. The leaves and the petals are very similar shapes. So after you've done your drawing, you want to be really cautious and careful that you've um, that you're painting the right ones. You're painting the leaves and not the um, petals and vice versa with the right colours. And I'll just dry my brush off because I don't know if you can see I've just slightly gone over the line there which I'm not happy about. Something and nothing really but it just looked better if I just tidy that up. So this is like I said it's the sap green with some ultramarine added into it because rose uh, leaves are quite dark. And you will see in one or two places the yellow's a little bit patchy. It was drying quite quickly. One way I could have avoided that was to perhaps use a bigger brush um, and also to wet the paper first. But because this was a new paper and I wasn't sure how, how we were going to get on with it, I thought we'd just try today you doing um, wet on to dry. And I don't actually mind one or two of these little sort of blemishes because that's how flowers are, isn't it? They're not uniform. And it's a lovely colour that's going to shine through those reds when we put them on the top of it. So this is a very distinctive shape with the rose and all these little ends. Um, so be careful to get your brush into the end with your paint. And you get these nice shapes like at the end here. Very. Some roses are more pointed than others, some have a much rounder petal to them but these have got a particularly pointy end to them. Okay so I think, um, no it's not quite dry actually, it's a little bit damp so we'll just leave that a few minutes to, to dry completely. Okay so that's completely dry now so now I'm going to start and put some of the second colour on that I got which was the cadmium orange. Now this tends to be on where the tips are and the yellow is nearer to the centre of the flower. So we'll just look at one petal at a time and if you do one petal at a time it means also that it's not going to dry out just as quickly than if you try doing all the petals at once. So I've just put it on the tip there and then I'm going to dry off my brush so that I've got a damp brush, not a wet one, actually that's a bit too dry. So your brush should be just damp and then I'm just going to tease the edge of that just to let that blend in a little bit more but you need to do this quite quickly whilst this is still wet and not too dry this is a very very smooth paper, it's a lovely paper actually, nice and smooth starting to dry a little bit blotchily but actually that's giving the nice effect of how those petals are. So we'll go up to the top now. These are quite yellow actually so they just have a little tip of orange on the end of them so I'm just going to pop a little tip on and not do anything else to that. This is the underside where it's curled over so that just wants to be completely filled in. And then again with this little one at the top, just blend that in slightly with a damp brush and with this one. Now I'm going to put this, uh, the drawing of this on my website for anybody who'd like to download that as a PDF file. So don't forget you don't have to do it in um, orange and yellow, you could do the rose any colour you wanted, it could be a completely imaginary colour. But see how that gold is shining through that orange in the same way that the sun shines through the rose, that's how they, they are really, that lovely yellow comes through with the sun shining through the petals. 
I'm hoping that shows up on the camera, it may not do. So just keeping going one petal at a time. Like I say, the, the yellow sort of is nearer to the centre of the flower and the orange on the outside edges. And that's why it gets this name, Tequila Sunrise. So if you've not heard of that uh, rose, if you want to Google it, it's a really pretty rose. And I'm sure that's the name of this one. If not, it's something very similar. I'm sorry, you can hear my chair creaking. I think it needs a bit of uh, oil. I've got one of those sort of swivelly chairs which I find it easy to work on but I'm, I am aware it's a bit noisy from time to time. And also today you might be able to hear the animals because they're all just outside the window. Um, I work right next to the window and today for some reason they're all being incredibly nosy so I've got about 10 cows and the two donkeys outside. So just gradually building this up and then after we've done this layer we'll leave it to completely dry again and then come back with a darker colour. So with watercolour we'll work, you work completely the opposite to oil colours, you're working from light to dark. So start with your lightest colours first, your lightest areas and then go on to the darkest ones. So with these folds where the petals are folded over I'm just blocking them in, I'm not softening that off at all. And I wanted this to be quite stylized and quite crisp. I didn't want to do too much blending, but of course if you did want to do this wet in wet, that would be an alternative for you as well. And the disadvantage of working from your phone or your tablet or something is that it quite often just times out and switches off doesn't it the uh, image as you're doing it so those blemishes that I was talking about where it's dried quite in little patches underneath and it, some of this is drying a little bit patchy as well I mean, it's obviously only a practice paper um, and because it's not wet to begin with it's um, like I said drying quickly it actually looks really nice it looks as if it's you know intended because it's the, the you know the petals have those little blemishes in sorry I'm forgetting my words today So you, it may be off camera, but you might not, you might not be able to see it. But I do have a little bit of tissue just to the side of my palette, so that when I wet, wash my brush, and then come back to blend, I've got something to just dry it off on. Sometimes I do it like this um, as well. It tends to be a little bit messier. If you wanted to be even more stylized, you could just leave a very crisp edge. So it really depends on your own style, and this is all part of developing your own style, what you like, your, your likes and dislikes. But it's good to give everything a try as well. Not to stick too much just to one, one thing while you're beginning, because that, that way you get to know what you like yourself. Okay, so while that, those oranges start to dry, I'm going to go on and put some extra on the green. So I'll just have to wake my phone up again. As you see, it's gone, gone dark. And the good thing is you can zoom in. So that is one advantage of taking photographs with your phone or your tablet. You can zoom into them. So with that darker colour, I can now start and put a few shadows 
on these leaves but of course these petals here are going to be casting shadows on the leaves so they're going to go in this direction and the tip might be catching a little bit more light so we'll just again just blend that down and leave the tip lighter this leaf behind here is probably going to be quite shady we can always come back later and put an extra layer on as well to go even darker but don't really want to go too dark I want to keep it a nice light little picture By putting some shadow just down one side of this, I don't know what you call it really, where the bud comes from, you're going to make that more of a sphere shape. And the same with the stem, if you put a shadow just down one side of the stem, and in fact you don't need to blend this, you could just leave a line of the darker colour down this one side. And that just gives you a little bit more of the shape of the stem there. And again this one. So this is going to be in shadow under here. And again that tip might be a little bit more in the light. But you really don't want these to be too bright because rose leaves are, do tend to be quite a dark um, green. Okay so this mm, it's not quite dry so we need to leave it now to completely dry. Now that's completely dry we can go on and put some more of the shadows onto or the darker colours onto the rose. So this time I'm got, I've got the cadmium orange but I've added to it some cadmium red and I'm just looking now for where the reddest areas are and there's just one or two areas by the tips and this time I'm not going to blend it at all I'm just going to leave it in a line whoops if I'm a bit more careful that is looking at where the darker colours are or the redder colours should I say So again, if you did print this PDF off, you could just do uh, completely imaginary where each colour was lying. You could do it completely the other way around. You could have the reds near the centre and the yellows to the tips. Read a new rose. By leaving that line quite crisp and just curving it round, just sort of emphasising the shape of those petals. These pieces that are curled over that we're actually seeing the back of are on the very tips of the petals, they're much redder than anything else. So I'm just again, I'm just going to block that whole thing in like we did before. And I think adding that little bit of cadmium red to the orange mix has just really livened the whole thing up. Obviously we have to be careful we don't want to cover all that beautiful yellow. Let that shine through. And it is still shining through. Again, the camera might not just pick this up, but even where I've put these, you know, a few layers on now, just three layers on there, um, that yellow is still shining through.
that is all actually part of that same petal I think there quite a dark picture I took on my phone because of taking it looking out of the window obviously the light wasn't great on the picture so a lot of this I've had to imagine and fill in the blanks really but we know what roses look like Put in another layer in one or two places just to emphasize again that red and then whilst that's drying we'll come back to the green so I'm actually going to get a little bit more of the blue and add it to that second mixture because I'm not happy about how dark we've gone I still think we need to be a little bit darker in places so again here And I'm just going to leave that again. I'm not going to blend that at all this time. And then down this side. Just going to give it a little bit extra def definition and shape. And clearly here it's quite dark. So maybe just a, a bit of a triangle shape coming across is just going to emphasise that shadow there. And again under here, maybe just another sort of triangle shape filling in. So I'm not actually looking really at the reference photo at all now. I'm just thinking what the picture itself needs to make it a bit more interesting. And I'm actually just going to dry my brush off a bit there and get some of this quinacridine gold that we had earlier. And just put, because these tips here are dry, I'm just going to put a tiny bit over the top of these two tips where it's perhaps catching the sun a bit more. And maybe a little bit down the, this side. Just imagine that that side's catching the sun more the other side. And just put a little bit of that yellow over, and that just also brings the whole thing together because we've got the yellow in the flower and then in the leaves as well just as if we've got a little bit of sunshine on it I'm just going to blend that in but of course you need to make sure that that's completely dry before you you do that so I think actually now we've got enough on the stem and the leaves we're going to leave those now and once this flowers dry again we'll come back and do the final shadows Okay, so I'm just going to finish with this darkest colour in the reds, which was the cadmium red with a little bit of the cadmium orange in and some winds of violet to make it more of a shadow colour. So I'm just going to carefully look now at where it needs to be darkest. And again, I'm not going to blend this in, I'm just going to put one or two lines where it's much darker. This also helps to emphasise the shapes as well of some of these curves. So this is more or less complete I think, I don't think we need to do too much more at this. But the, really, the intention with it was to um, do a rose from the back rather than the front because we, you know, when we do pictures of flowers we tend to just photograph them from the front and it's actually lovely from the back because you see all these curves and shapes where the petals are folded over and the lights obviously shining through as well. Nice to get a line along there to distinguish that curve from the back of the petal. Like I say with most of my videos, I'm, I'm on a limited time here. 
um, doing this for you but you'll have much more time than me so if you want to go into more detail if you do look at uh, these roses perhaps if you google it and get an image of a tequila sunrise rose you will see that the colours in places they can be quite stripy sometimes so they can have a bit of a yellow stripe going through them and things like that you might want to put more detail in and actually do more of a botanical study than I have Well, I think I'm going to call it a day now. So I'm quite happy with the, the shape of that. So really the shape is all about the initial drawing. Getting, like I say, these very distinctive points on the petals and these curves where they, they're curling back on themselves. That's what makes this particular rose. So if you did want the PDF of the drawing to have a go at colouring yourself or you can trace it, you can colour it, whatever you want to do with it or copy it, um, I will put the PDF on my website and I'll put a link in the description below to that. There's one or two other PDFs on there, not as many as I would like to. Hopefully I'll get time in the coming weeks to do a few more of those. So if you would like uh, more of those, let me know. Um, and let me know if there's any particular subjects that you would like me to do PDFs for you, for you to print off at home. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.